because they're really two intelligent people, Beatrice and Benedict, we decided that they had a fantastic love affair at some point in the past. And we, we're making this up, this is not in the script. But they had a fantastic love affair. Everything was perfect. It was better than perfect. And then because they're really intelligent, because they're really witty, somebody said something to the other person which was completely misconstrued. And because it was so perfect, when it goes bad, it goes really bad. Sometimes some things are too good to be true. And sometimes you know in your heart of hearts that people have settled for simplistic, obvious truths because that's what you should believe. And these two don't do that. They, they won't kid themselves. And I think they won't kid themselves to the extent that they won't believe in their love for each other. I mean, they just don't trust it. It's too good to be true. And it's quite clear that Benedict and Beatrice have a complicated relationship. It's really built on sparring and on wit and on one-upmanship. So there's a competitive nature to their relationship and it can quickly actually, um, the wit can turn to barbs and they can insult each other, which is what happens. It is true that in some ways the plot is very much driven by the Claudio hero story and um, uh, the deception that Don John pulls over them and, and all that ensues. You, you need that story, but there's more time given and more focused by Shakespeare on the thematic center of the play, which is probably carried most importantly by Beatrice and Benedict. Now, to make that center clear, you need its opposite. So, so both sets are important. So the play is also quite a lot about young love, romantic love, and older love, or cynical love. Um, Beatrice and Benedict are older. They are past their prime in terms of marriageability and procreation. And they're both of them quite cynical. They're cynical about love, but they're also cynical. Beatrice is very much cynical about society, women's place in society, and uh, about soldiering and war, all the things that prop up this social structure. And that's juxtaposed with a hero and Claudio who don't even know each other. Benedict and, and I have known each other for years. We've had this relationship for years. We, we're quite comfortable in it. We get the feeling that Hero and Claudio have never met. So they're going to get married with nary a conversation between them. They idealize each other. And do it with all my heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for me. <laughs> Kill Claudio. Not for the wide world. When you talk about Much Ado About Nothing, and, and you talk about it with actors or directors who have done the show before, and you say, oh, let's do Much Ado, one of the first questions that they're going to ask is, so what are we going to do about Kill Claudia? It's that important to the play. And from Benedict's point of view, especially with this production, he really does mean, ask me to do anything for you and I will do it. And the one thing that he would, that he'd never suspect in a million years is to kill his best friend. And it's not just to kill Claudio, it's to end the friendship. I think Beatrice is aware of what it will cost him. But I think she asks, as we often do in crisis, she asks out of a desperate need to free herself from suffering. And it's wrong-headed. But once it comes out, there's no taking it back. But now for him to for him to back off of his promise would rob him of the opportunity to prove to her how devoted he is really to her. So she can't take it back. It's the beginning of a great moment that I think it starts with Kill Claudio and it ends with I will challenge him. And in those mm, half a dozen lines, 10 lines there, that's where he will make the decision to stop being that confirmed bachelor, 
to say that my, my friends are no longer as important as my love. So it's a, it's a pretty big moment. Like in life, crisis brings out the best and the worst in you. It brings out the best and the worst in them. And Benedict stands up for Beatrice. So she begins to see him in a new light, and that he sees her in a new and tender light. So it's a really lovely play. I, I actually think there's a, a great lesson in it, in it for all of us um, to take a step back or a step forward and take a new perspective.